I'm going to be talking to you all about what it's like to face fears and find empowerment and confidence through those. Now, I got an experience to do this when I went on a mission trip earlier this summer to Costa Rica through my church. I was so lucky to go on this trip because I had been struggling with my inner confidence, with finding that part of me that pushed me to move forward and continue doing things and finding my place. This trip helped me find that. And there were a couple of main things that I had to face when I was going on this trip that I had thought about beforehand. The first was packing. The second was who was going on this trip with me. My third was learning to be uncomfortable, something everyone loves to do. And my fourth was why was I even there? And then what was it going to be like when I eventually made it back home? So we're going to start with packing. That is my actual duffel bag that I took on this trip. But imagine that filled until it is almost completely bulging. I mean, you're given a packing list and you think, do I need everything on this list? Do, do I really have to take it all? Am I going to use it all? Yes, you're going to use it all. Take it all. Take the bag. It will crush you, but you have to take it all. <laughs> Who was going on this trip with me? I am close with people in my church community, but none of my really close friends were going on this trip with me, which meant I was going to have to find people to talk to, people to sit with. I was going to have to make closer relationships with people, which is something that's scary from someone who's 16. It's a little terrifying. And I had to. There was no way I would survive the trip without it. And I did. And I still have maintained some of those relationships today. Being uncomfortable. Now, first I'm going to tell you how after we had gotten to Costa Rica, we got off of the plane, we made it through customs, great, everything was good. We go outside and there are these three buses. There are 56 of us and we all had bags about the size of that duffel I showed you. So one bus was completely devoted to just our luggage. Now, mind you, these buses had no air conditioning and were honestly a little interesting looking because of just how they were. So 56 of us crammed onto these two not super large buses. And when you have that many people, that means jump seats. And for anyone who does not know what a jump seat is, it kind of folds down from a seat in the middle of an aisle and you flip it up and you sit down and they call it a seat, but it is not. And when you are stuck for three and a half hours in between two high school boys who have not showered and have been on an international flight, it is not necessarily the best place to be. Now, other things I had to learn about being uncomfortable in. I was sleeping on a concrete floor with no air conditioning for a week. I also didn't have a warm shower for a week. Ice cold, it woke you up, it was great. These little things that seem so big are so easy to live without. Now, one other thing I had to do was prove myself. And I mean, I was on a team that was doing manual labor every day. It's not what I do every day at all. And these are some of the guys who were in my work group. They're all big, strong, athletic guys who did not necessarily think that I would be helpful. I proved myself and we worked as a team and we got our project done. That shows when you believe in yourself, you can get things done. Why I was really there. Yes, I was there to do service work. I was there to help a community. I was there to do things for other people. And it's amazing the look on a person's face when they see how much you care just to be there. And it's amazing to just have someone come up to you and say, thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up for us. That is something that you will never be able to explain until you really feel it for yourself. I was there for those reasons, but I was also there to learn how to find my inner confidence. On this trip, I learned lessons that I would not have learned anywhere else. And that is so important, not only in a teenager's life, but in an adult's life too. Someone who really showed me the power of confidence and believing in yourself was a girl named Ailey, who I met on my work site. She was 18 and had a three-year-old son. She has taught herself English and is teaching her child English so that she can hopefully get a college education and degree and provide for her son. 
She would not have been able to do that if she hadn't believed in herself, if she hadn't persevered. And that shows just how important those things are. Coming home. This is a picture of some of my friends and I. And coming home was another experience that I wasn't necessarily prepared for. You come home after being in a place with so little and people who are so joyful, even with so little. And you come back and you have so much. You have a roof over your head. You have food on the table. You have the opportunity to go to a wonderful school. And you honestly feel guilty. But you shouldn't feel guilty. What you should do is take those gifts that you have been given and use those to help other people. Use those to make things better for others who are less fortunate than your situation. Going from a place of facing your fears, of not having the confidence that you want in your life, is very, very scary. It's natural to be scared. But when you do, you will find something in yourself that you probably had no idea was even there. Thank you so much.